when somebody's consuming a biodynamic product, they can rest assured that what they're consuming is is actually adding to the to the, the circle of life. It's 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 benefiting um, the environment, and, and it's a it's a deeply ec ecological practice. So it, it's it's considering the habitat, and it's considering the watershed, and it's considering everything around it. So it's a very conscious product. So when you consume something like this, um, you know, you're, you're, you're becoming a part of that consciousness. We could not have offered a more compelling description of biodynamics than Gabriel Sipe's rendition. His father, Stephen, founded Summerhill Pyramid Winery in 1986. Almost immediately, Stephen decided to go organic after realizing that any product used on hillside vineyards would eventually end up in Okanagan Lake, the same lake that supplies the local drinking water. 20 years later, Gabriel and brother Ezra took the farm to another level embracing biodynamics. 15 years on, the brothers reflect on what they've learned and where the farm and wines are today. We begin inside the winery's striking pyramid, which represents the family's commitment to the notion of working in harmony with nature and the cosmos. And the way we came to biodynamics was as organic farmers. Um, that was part of the founding of Summerhill. Um, this has been a vineyard, Summerhill Vineyard's been here since the 1940s. It was mostly table grapes and hybrid winemaking grapes. When my family moved here in 1986, and when Gabriel and I moved back here, we took permaculture courses. We went and studied with uh, Gregoire Lamoureux at Spiral Farm in Winlaw, BC. And uh, Gabriel started making all of the biodynamic preparations. And we started composting more seriously. And so the introduction of biodynamics was, was a way to revitalize the vineyard in an organic way. It, it, it is to make the organics sustainable. We learned to use the indigenous foods that were always here, already here, the, the choke cherries, the elderberries, um, the herbs, and the, the, the mustard greens, and all the things that come up naturally. And then we added gardens, and I, I, I created forest gardens. We built the, the nurseries, the chicken coops. <laughs> And just year after year, we've been expanding and expanding to this, this point now where our, all of our systems are interconnected with the whole farm and every department, so nobody produces any waste and everything goes back into the soil, mm. into the ecology. And, and uh, it makes the farm more resilient economically and ecologically and when we stack the functions organically. Well, some of the aspects of biodynamics, like for instance, the preparations are not well understood and sometimes misunderstood. What are some of the challenges uh, with some of the things that you must do to be biodynamic and to sort of tell that story? Yeah, well, my brother Gabriel makes all the biodynamic preparations mm -hmm. and I'm um, pretty sure it's a joy for him. When you bury the cow manure, um, you know, it looks and smells and feels like exactly like what you'd expect it to. And you dig up those cow horns um, the next year, and it is transformed to a beautiful black cakey earth with streaks of white mycorrhiza through it. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you make a broth of that and you dynamize it, um, you, know, you, are, you are breeding bacteria that is like bracken to a forest, you know, that, that, that is seeding uh, the life force and revitalizing your soil, and it's a beautiful thing. Composting is, is the core of, of, of what we do. It's the art, it's, it's the life force. It's, uh, it's probably the most rewarding thing that I do, being able to take all the waste um, that comes from this place and uh, layer it and turn it and water it and watch it heat up and then break down and transform into this rich substance that just holds water and grows things. Everything gets compost, the grapes get compost. Um, all the plants here get compost, and it's 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 the reciprocal process that enables us to be organic. You know, it's and it's so it is so simple, and it's it's so easy. Moving from the vineyard to the winery, we asked winemaker Michael Alexander how biodynamics defines the way he makes wine. So we don't use any inoculums, no yeast, no bacteria. Uh, we don't use any nutrients. Um, we find with a little bit of bentonite, um, and we add a little bit of sulfur. Uh, but that's it. We will filter if we have to. Um, but the idea is that we bring the fruit in, uh, we destem it or press it or do whatever we're going to do to it, put it into tank and let Mother Nature do the rest. 
there have been years that we've decided that the fruit wasn't where we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've, we've moved it into organic programs. It still says certified organic. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely one of those things that if there's one you like, there's not a guarantee it'll be back the next year but maybe the year after that. Yeah. So how do we know uh, uh, a wine is biodynamic? I guess let's get down to the basics of that for consumers. Demeter is like an international um, standard and then we have a, like a provincial Demeter organization, Demeter BC, that okay. um, certifies um, our farm and our wines. Um, they're also certified by, by organic uh, standards and we kind of use that organic standards as like our, our base you know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. to, to check all those boxes because there's a lot of overlap. The, the main overlap is that, is that there's no synthetics. There's plenty of regulations in the biodynamic world, but it's the magic that makes it special. It's the farmer as a steward. Is the farmer as this, is, this farm is a microcosm. And, and, and me as a farmer, I'm a steward and I'm bringing harmony to this place. Uh, and it's an orientation towards nature where, I mean, I think humans are just, we have incredible hubris. You know, um, you know science is defined by what we, what we do not know. You know, it, it, it's defined by the questions that we ask and, and, what, and what, we, what we can learn. And you can only learn when you don't know. And I, I, I just feel like nature is so complex and so brilliant. And it is something that we are learning that and that we ought to be humble before mm -hmm. and we ought to take nature as our teacher not as our servant it doesn't mean that the biodynamic wines that you as a consumer will necessarily like them more right you might like the style of our 2020 organic Gewurztraminer which is maybe a little drier right. maybe has a little more um, like a chalky kind of... Deliciousness. Yeah, right? <laughs> you may like that more than this one, which, yeah. which has, I mean, incredible qualities. Like, I mean, I love that real, like, grapefruit quality. I find it's an amazing expression of Gewurz Trimator. This wine actually tastes like a wine that comes from some place. That transparency, that window into wh whatever the place is about, you can, you can smell it and taste that. When you read the the certification requirements for biodynamic wine, mm -hmm. it transcends anything to do with, with organics and gets right to the core of the philosophy of what a wine of provenance is. You know, if you were to taste these blind, you would notice something very similar in all of them. Well, they still contain their unique varietal character. Yeah. It always takes me back to harvest when I'm doing the grape sampling, mm -hmm. walking through and tasting the grapes and being in the vineyard and um, they kind of become little capsules of my memories of the vines. Do you feel like you can be an inspiration, Ezra, to the rest of the valley? You know, that's actually one of the coolest things about biodynamics, and it's right in the script, is to share, is the idea that if my neighbor's farm is healthy, that's to my benefit. Right. That means that, that my little ecosystem has a better chance, you know, mm -hmm. that there's more life around me. That's good for me. And uh, so that's a nice thing, you know. It's, it's not a competitive mindset. It's a, it's a holistic mindset for, for our little valley here. And uh, we're happy to share. Um, keeping bees, it like makes you extra sensitive to biodiversity and when everything's flowering to make sure that they have something to eat all, all year long. And the cottonwoods in our wetland, like, so that's where they get their propolis to make their their wax so their home's resilient to, to mites and other disease. Yeah, bees are just intrinsically connected to the ecology and it really shows you how everything affects everything else. I feel so great about where the farm is at today, um, just after all the years of incremental work and, and intention. It's, it's a very biodiverse, very ecological farm. And we know this farm can be an inspiration for a lot of people. And what we would like to do is create a, a place that people can gather and commune with each other and teach each other and inspire each other and create relationships and networks and bring it back to their own communities in British Columbia and around the world and start to really 
uh, change the way we do things. Once considered on the edge of esoteric, the wisdom and values behind biodynamics present as a far more sensible case in the face of climate change and the legacy of conventional farming. But at Summerhill, it's simply a way of life. <laughs>